Do you want a constant steady stream of iron in your Minecraft world? Well, I'm going to show you how and you don't even have to build it in the spawn chunks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamance, in my farm tutorial series. Now, today, it's another revisit because loads of you, and I mean loads of you, or genuinely hundreds and hundreds of you, have said, Avo, we'd really, really like you to go and have a relook at the very first iron farm that you did, which I think was, as I recall, this probably about nine or ten months ago. It was ages ago, but there are some kinks in that iron farm now as a result of updates, so I want to get rid of those and make them ever so slightly better for you, and also, 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 just to explain a little bit about the Iron Farm itself. This is not the amazing Iron Phoenix by Tango Tech. It's not. We're not going to get a gazillion iron every 47th of a second. That's not how this works. That kind of thing is for high active servers that need literally thousands of iron every 40 minutes or something. This is going to get you two full stacks of iron approximately every hour. Now, you don't have to do it in the spawn chunks. It's not that important to do it in the spawn chunks, but... If you do do it in the spawn chunks, it will work no matter where in the overworld you are, which is great. So you can go for a journey, 5,000 blocks, wherever you want. This iron farm is still going to be working for you, producing two stacks of iron every hour while you're away. Brilliant, eh? But if you don't do it in your spawn chunks, that doesn't matter. You can do it in a chunk that's outside of the spawn chunks. It'll still work as long as that chunk is still loaded. The second that chunk unloads, then it stops working and it waits until it gets reloaded again. And then it works again. You don't have to press any reset buttons. You don't have to do anything like that. It works absolutely fine. Now, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And I'm going to simplify a load of it as well. So shall we crack over it? Yeah, I think we shall. Hey, right, this, you do need a few blocks, but they're relatively simple. Don't make it out of iron. I'll tell you in the video what to make stuff out of. But for your structural base, you need 50 structural base blocks, 52 glass blocks, 548 structural blocks for the first level, 72 wooden doors, 540 structural blocks for the upper level, along with 76 slabs. And then for each villager pod, you need 24 structural blocks, 54 glass blocks. And then on top of that, you need 12 water buckets, two chests, two trap chests, four hoppers, four stairs, eight signs, a bucket of lava, a load of torches, probably 30 or so is probably enough, or some other light source. And you're gonna to need to get yourself up to about 40 villagers using a separate villager breeding system. Let's get on with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a space that is six across and 10 along. So six by 10, that is gonna be the foot of your building. That's the space you need on the ground to be able to build it. You need a little bit bigger than that as you go up. You need about 24 by 24 as a square once you get a few blocks up, but on the floor, you need six by 10. I'm gonna be using iron blocks quite a lot with this build. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that. This is an iron farm. I'm assuming you're doing an iron farm because you want iron, not because you wanna use loads of iron, but look at the lovely squareage you get with an iron block. This is so it's easy for you to count. Please do. Get something like cobble or stone brick or something that you like as this block and that will work much, much better for you. One point for at least the base part of this, you can't use wood. Don't use wood. You could use the wood a bit further up, but don't use wood for the bottom bit. Let's get on. So the first thing you've got to do is decide which is your front. One of your six long sides is going to be your front. Take out the middle four. Then on the left hand side, put a double chest and on the right hand side, put a double trapped chest. Then the four blocks directly behind those chests, you wanna get your hoppers and using shift click, shove the hopper into the back of the chest. Now, if you wanna put the side hoppers into the middle hoppers, that's fine, but the hoppers have to eventually be pointing into the chest and it's just that easy to shoot them straight off by shift clicking straight into those chests like that. Then what we're going to do is get ourselves a little bit of glass and we're going to get our glass to come along one, two, three, four and five. And then the same on the other side, one, two, three, four and five. Then get yourself a set of steps. And I've not got my steps yet. doesn't matter what the steps are. I'm going to get some stone brick steps just simply because I can. And we're going to put stone brick steps upside down like this. Now, because a step is officially a transparent block, that chest will still open, that chest 
will still open. If we'd have put in a full block here, let me just demonstrate, so a block of stone for example, if we put in a full block there, that chest won't open no matter how many times you hit it. But if you put in a step, it will open. And we're after it being able to open. So that's why we've done that. Then what I want you to do is to get these up three high like this. Three high like that. And then across the top of the steps, finish that off. And try and aim better than I did. So that's great. And then here, we're going to get whatever structural block you're going to be using. And we're going to run the structural block in a horseshoe all the way around like that. Then we're going to come along here. And this is the funny bit. We're just coming out across the two. So don't come out the back one. Just come out one before the back one. So one, two, three, and then come across and build that up. And build it up to the same level that you have got your glass like that. So you should have a system that looks half glass like that way and half whatever block it is you're using stone stone brick i don't know then get yourself a sign and you want to get not the bottom one but the second one put a sign and then done on that glass then shift click put another sign shift click another sign shift click another sign so that's four signs then here a sign shift click another sign shift click another sign shift click another sign there you go so that gives you basically a little trench along there which is going to be your killing bit that's where we're going to kill stuff a lot and we're going to kill stuff with lava we're going to use lava today to kill stuff because lava is probably the best way to kill stuff when it comes to iron golems and we can just on the inside of one of those two middle blocks we're going to shove our lava block now that will flow across the entire width. It doesn't matter that it's uneven. I promise you, it makes no difference. Now, I've heard word that on some versions of Minecraft, this will burn the signs. This is a problem for this system because, frankly, you can't block up this height here. It has to be open and signs are open. I am very open in the comments down below as to how someone that has a burny sign would come across this problem and solve it. Answers in the comments below. I'm really, really open and interested to understand what that option would be. Right, then what we're going to do is we are going to bring it up just one more row. Around like that. Cross like this and then change up the block like this there we go so that is stage one and what we're going to do now just to finish off stage one is put four buckets of water in that little recess that you have made at the bottom and that flows beautifully onto the hoppers at the end and anything that gets deaded in here the drops will flow onto the hoppers and be sucked into your chests that bit is really easy Okay, next bit is also fairly simple. What we're going to do is we're going to put a block there and a block there. So I'm kind of going to try and do this in as survivally a way as I possibly can. And then we want to put a block there, 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 and a block there. You can see what we've done. So we've created a two by two gap there a two by two gap there and then we're going to come with blocks all the way around here like that and we want to have the same thing again on this side so we're going to have two and then it comes in two and then it comes in and then we're going to create that kind of again two space so what we've got here if I take it from an aerial view you can kind of see it we've got four blocks across four blocks across but with the corner taken out and then what we're going to do is we are going to fill in this bit so as we don't fall into the lava because on survival if you fall into the lava it really really hurts and then here we need to come out eight blocks so if you imagine this is block one i'm going to come out eight blocks so shift click come out so that's one two three four five six seven and eight and then do the same here all the way out to eight 
and then you're going to do the same here. So we've got one, two, three, four already, and then shift click out five, six, seven, eight, and similarly eight that way. How many is that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. And finally, this being one, shift click in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we've made a bit of a kind of a pointy star sort of shape. So if I show you from the top, you can see the shape that we've made. It's sort of like that. You've got the hole, which is four across. It's basically a, a four by four square, but with the corners taken out. And then on the two sides of each of that four and four square come out eight further blocks and then all I need you to do is fill it in so you've got a big square and that square should be 20 blocks by 20 blocks and I literally do mean fill it in nothing more complicated than that just with the same block get yourself all filled in both sides so that's that bit done already again remember you're going to be doing this probably in something like cobblestone or maybe you'll be doing it with um, something like I don't know sandstone it's entirely up to you what you do this in I would recommend however that you do this in a block that is not flammable and the reason for that is this little lava blade here you get the do you see that there it just from floated up a little kind of fiery tick if that hits something that's flammable it can cause it to set fire so if you made this out of wood and that little flamey tick came out that could could cause it to catch fire and you don't want that so i'll be back when i've finished this 20 by 20 platform now we have a lovely 20 by 20 square and that hole in the middle is directly in the middle of that 20 by 20 square you've got eight going out that way eight going out that way eight going out that way and eight going out that way so now what we want to do is we kind of come to one of the corners doesn't matter which one and we're going to come up and build a row all the way along now what you're going to do, and I don't know what your favourite technique is, but you are going to be building two high on this. So we want a row that is two high on each side of this. So you might want to do that, or you might want to do one row and then do the other row. It's entirely up to you. Personally for me, this is a much faster way to do two at a time. So just get that all the way around until you've got a two eye trim. Too high, and then in the corner, I want you to put one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then come along the diagonal, so you can see I'm following the diagonal here along, which should also be seven blocks one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then fill that in with the stone or whatever it is you're using to build this. Again, don't use iron. Iron would be a really daft thing for you to use because this is an iron farm because you need iron. Don't make iron blocks into your iron farm. It's just silly. It's just because you've got this really easy to count block edge. So same here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Come along the diagonal like that and fill it in. And then do that in the other two corners too. So there you have it. You've got a platform that's got diamonds, diamonds, triangles in the corners that are seven along that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven along that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in all four corners. Then if you get a bucket of water in each corner, the magic happens. So one there, one there right in the corner one there and right in the corner one there look the water goes all the way to the edge but doesn't go over the edge and what that means is that this farm will work in 113 you're not using anything to support the water at all it is simply flowing and as a result of that flow that will push anything in this place over the edge and into the hole down into the water here and the flow of this water will push it into that kill zone like that dead easy right it couldn't get any more easy than that frankly and then what i want you to do is once you've done that and you're still in survival get yourself two high blocks in each corner one and two two high blocks like that and then get yourself a door and you want to be putting yourself a door 
on each uh, of this edges. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of the water because in actual fact, it's a lot easier to do this bit before you put the water in. So, sorry about that, but I hope you watch that bit first. So, stick yourself some doors all the way along like that. And I want you to do that on all four sides. So the next thing I want you to do once you've got all the doors on, so you've got quite a lot of doors here actually, you've got 18 there, 18 there, 18 there, and 18 there. That is 64 doors. I think, no, 36 and 36, yes, yeah, 64 doors. So that's a lot of doors. And as a result of it being a good number of doors, this is gonna help you generate those golems. So come along here, and I want you to come along. I'm walking on the top of the doors. That makes me very talented. I want you to come along here and get the two blocks that are kind of along the edge of that hole. So you can see the two blocks that we originally counted. And then get yourself here and pull yourself out. One, two, and three. And do that on all of the other sides too. So once you've done that, I want you to expand them by three blocks each way, like that. So you've got a total of one, two, three, whoops, four, five, oh, I lost count because I placed my block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks across. So that's what we're trying to achieve there. And again, we're doing this on each side. So we've got three blocks on this side. That is going to act as the floor of the villager pods that we're going to be filling up. And we'll talk about villagers in a minute because you need villagers for this fella to work. Okay. I'm going to come across around this side and this side. And there we go. So we've got the platforms for the villagers there. That's great. So we're just going to leave them alone for the moment because what we are now going to do is we're going to fill up across the top here. Just by putting a block. Now this block does two things. The first thing it does is edge off the top of the door to make it look alright. And the second thing it does, can I open a door, is activate this door to make it a village. It actually turns the door into a village once a villager spots it. Uh, because the way a village works is it needs a block above a door that can see light, and that is what activates it as a village. There we go. So we've got all the doors perfectly activated like that. That's brilliant. So now you've got a couple of choices. Now you don't have to put a second layer on this. In fact, you don't even have to put a floor on it. But some people do like to put a floor on it. And I completely get that if they like a floor. I quite like a floor on it myself, I have to say. But if you want to do a second layer, this is the opportunity for you to do a second layer. And what you do for your second layer is you come up another two in each corner, like that, and like that, and you build your floor up across here. Oh, except I can't make it work. And you just get your floor going until you have the same shape hole in the middle as you do on the bottom floor. So you've got this hole here, you just build this floor up until you've got the same shaped hole there as well. So I'll be back when I've done that. So right now we've got a second floor with a hole that is directly over the first hole. Now the whole point of a second floor, it's quite simple really, it just increases the chance of a golem spawning. Now the reason we want to have the second floor is every time that there is a kind of a spawning attempt for a golem, it looks at the spawning area and the spawning area is based around the center of the village and the village is the center of all the doors averaged so you can see the center of this village is basically here and what it does it goes out 18 blocks from the center of the village in all directions and it goes up and down just a few blocks now it goes up more than the number of blocks of the height of that chamber which is why second floor gives another number of blocks that the golem could possibly spawn on as a percentage of the total blocks that the golem could possibly spawn on so if you can imagine the golem could spawn on that block it could spawn on that block but it can't because it's an air block it could spawn on that block but it can't because it's an air block it could spawn on that block and it could spawn on that block but these three these four blocks there are all air blocks so it can't spawn there but this block it can 
So there you go. And then we're going to build a wall, again, too high, all the way around the outside, exactly the same as we did on the last one. And again, you can build it however you want. It just doesn't matter because all we're doing is we are repeating exactly what we did on the first floor. We're going to put in the same triangles. We're going to put on the same height walls. We're going to put four buckets of water in each corner. Exactly the same. You don't need to see me do that again. You've already seen me do it once. I'll be back when I've finished. So that is the second level all complete. And you don't have to put a roof on it. The reason you have to put a roof on it is because you're not going to be affected by the light or the lack of light. That's not the reason that golems spawn. And also, mobs don't spawn here anyway. So it's not like you've got to be able to light it up or block it off. What you do need to do, however, because these blocks are probably going to be spawnable blocks, depending on what it is you used. If you use glass, then obviously they're not. But if they are spawnable blocks, you might just want to put a half slab all the way around just to stop things from spawning on the edge because if you spawn on the edge it just means that they're going to be walking around your iron farm and your iron golems if they see them they're going to try and get to them because iron golems don't always like these mobs you see and as a result they're going to try and walk against the water and they're going to take longer to get into your kill zone and if they take longer to get into your kill zone that actually stops the possibility of another one um, forming or spawning and if it stops one spawning that means you're going to end up having a lower yield and that is not something that you want in your life so there you go that is the primary structure of the kind of the collection point the last one i did if you remember if you've seen it this was an 18 by 18 square not a 20 by 20 square what can sometimes occasionally happen then is if the um center of the village is ever so slightly off and it can happen that it is ever so slightly off if the door isn't registered over there. The average shifts across a block. And that can mean that on the outside in your pod it is possible for a golem to spawn. However, if you do a 20 by 20 with an 18 by 18 in the middle, that possibility is removed, at least in the current and 113 versions of the game. What they do in the future, goodness only knows, because Mojang do mess around with stuff. But for now, that should remove the possibility of you having the problem of golems spawning in your villager pods. Now this iron farm is not designed to be able to breed your villagers inside your farm. That's not what I recommend you do at all. Remember, you've got 64 doors on this maximum 64 doors that means that the villager cap is about one third of that if you're going to be breeding them so you can only breed up something like 21 villagers within this farm once you start in 22 villagers it won't let you do anymore and i quite like having 10 villagers in each pod so my recommendation is get yourself a villager farm there are plenty of villager farm tutorials on youtube go and find yourself one i've done a really really nice collaboration of a villager breeder that is with my friend Frillioff. I'll put the link in the description below. Go and check it out. It's a really, really good um, villager breeder called The Love Shack and gets load of villagers and it'll be perfect for this kind of farm. And then you can just ship them over it. So get yourself a villager breeder. Do not breed your villagers in your farm. It just doesn't work. But what you do need to do is get yourself a row of glass on the inside of each of these pods like this. And again, round here and once more round here. Now the reason for this is because you are not breeding your villagers in here, the villagers you put in, you want to stay in and you don't want them going through these doors. And if they go through the doors, they can fall in the water, get trapped and go down into the system. They won't get killed because they're not tall enough for the lava and they'll just bounce around over your um, over your hoppers here. And it's just a real pain. They get in the way, they clog the thing up. And more specifically, they reduce the efficiency of the system. This block here then stops them being able to get through the doors, but by the same time, it also allows them to see the doors, which means that the doors get registered as a village and it works perfectly well. Then get yourself another row of glass there and another and another. So that is three high. And then once you've done that, come across like that. Join that up and join that up. So what you've got there is you've got a hole here, which we'll come to in a bit, and you've filled up that side completely. And if a villager is inside this, if I can drive well enough to get in, it's not easy to drive. No, I'm not gonna be able to, there we go. Down, up, there we go, I got in, yay. So villager 
can't get into that door. You see, it's just too... See what I mean? It's too small. A baby villager could, but you're not putting any baby villagers in here because you're not breeding them. Are you getting the not breeding message? It's very important. So they're all going to be adult villagers that you have in here, which is awesome. And they can't get in, and but they can still register the door. So that's great. This space is still here because you need to be out to get your villagers in. We'll come back to that in a bit. And then cover it all over until you've got a completely glass pod. And then you want to do that on each and every side. So I'll be back when I've done that. So you have got four very nearly completed pods. You've got your hole here to get your villager in. But other than that, those pods are exactly as you want them. Now, you just have to transport your villagers from your villager breeder to the iron farm or the village and the iron farm. You can nudge them into a boat and then you can push them around. You can even do it on the land in the water too. You can nudge them, although that one can get really frustrating. You can even transport them by minecart. So once you've got your fellas in there, just get rid of whatever system it was you used to get them into the pods. This is not a tutorial for how to get the village into the pods, just literally you could use the rail system or the boat system or whatever you'd like. Get them all into the pods and then the last thing you need to do is start to light up underneath here because the last thing you want is for this system to end up giving you a real headache when it comes to mobs underneath here. That is not something you want at all. So get yourself just a little bit of light. It doesn't matter how you do it. I'm just lobbing down a few torches just to stop it being dark underneath here because it is under shade. So officially, you're gonna have low light levels even in the daytime, but especially in the nighttime. Now these farms, before you say avo, it's not generating anything. These farms can take a little while to boot up. Now, a little while could mean a few minutes, or it could mean a couple of three hours, in fact, just to get itself properly booted. But eventually, these villagers will register all of these uh, doors as a village. It will be one collective village. And once it's got sufficient villageness in its system, it will start to produce some golems. And that is what you're after. Oh, look, I appear to have a baby villager there all just kind of wandered around aimlessly on the shelf. That's okay. They obviously decided to breed without me knowing about it. Never mind. But so yeah, we've got plenty there and we should start to see iron golems coming through the system once it's managed to boot itself up. So it's been going for about an hour and 15 minutes and that's including the time that we've had uh, with it warming up as well. It took about, I reckon about half an hour, something like that, to get actually moving. But once it moved in, it started to spawn some golems, so we're quite happy about that. So just have a look and see. Oh, we got another one coming through as well now at the moment. Let's just watch him die, because we're vicious like that. There you go, another golem gets, bites the dust, or bites the lava more specifically. There you go, he's happy. Well, he's not happy. His face is very, very hot, and his feet are very, very cold, and it's very confusing to him. And as a result, he died a lot. And we are now 56 iron and 15 poppy in that chest. And 17 poppy and 57 iron in that chest. Richer after, I say, around about 95 to 100 minutes altogether. So actually, it's not that bad. So there we have one reworked iron farm with some of the kinks taken out, the complex collection systems taken out, the fact that sometimes iron golems spawn inside the pods, that's taken out. Sometimes the villagers go through the door and you leave them, that's taken out. And we've confirmed that you do not, do not, do not breed your villagers inside your iron farm. Do that in a village breeder at least 65 blocks away because you don't want wooden doors within 65 blocks of this farm. It's dead simple really, isn't it? Don't do it out of iron, for goodness sake. Make it out of something nice, like stone bricks or something like that. I know I have great faith in your building ability. This is built for function. It is not built for prettiness. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know that you're enjoying it and then perhaps I'll make some more of the revisits or even some new stuff. And also, if you've not done it already, please do remember to hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and the notification squad. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.